Oh, uh, I didn't click to go live on YouTube. So those weights will give us. We need to create a graph, like I guess a tree, that it will allow us to go forward. And also, we will add a bunch of negative edges going back. I think I see what's going on. I have some idea how this solution will look like. We are live on YouTube now. Still, that's, I would say, not a friendly Division 1 problem. How quickly did people solve it? Uh, I don't like this statement, not this thing. Two to four minutes. All right. So I think it will be like this. Or if I know in the example that the distance from vertex 1 to vertex 2 is 2 and then to vertex 3 is 3 in total I can make it like this we've got cost of 2, cost of 1 and now I can add back edges of what weights I think here minus 1 here minus 2 and minus 3 and it sh should be a pattern in general let's say that from vertex 1 the cheapest total cost will be to vertex 4 and the distance given in the input is uh, 10 then it will be 2 and 3 if values from the input are 10 15 and 70. Let's say it's like this. Then I will create this kind of graph. 10, 5, 2, and the back edge is just as small, as negative as possible. Here, this is minus 2, this is minus 7, and so on. Just all the edges going to the left. That's my idea. Let's verify if this matches the output. 10, 1, minus 2, minus 1, plus 3, that's minus 3. Minus 3 indeed. And the other samples are very small. Not very meaningful. First time in the stream? Well, welcome. Hi Marvel, hi OnePex. Right, now N is big, so how do we compute this quickly? Let's think. I think it's like this. We have this sorted sequence of distances from the start. And the, neg the negative edges, the, the red ones going to the left, uh, the sum of them is just the sum of all the differences. 10 minus 0 plus 15 minus 0 plus 17 minus 0, 10 mi uh, 15 minus 10 and so on. I easy to, of course, iterate over all the pairs, but for every element, let's say uh, this 17, we can easily count in how many pairs it will appear it will be in this case I think it's 3 times 17 because 3 times we'll have 17 minus something plus twice 15 because twice we have 15 minus something plus once 10 plus 0 times 0 minus once we subtract 15 twice subtract 10 and 3 times subtract 0 
uh, I claim that this is the answer. If we iterate, if we compute the sum of differences, so red edges in total give us minus 56 in this case. Uh, in general, if we have this sorted sequence of distances, uh, say d0 or d of 0, d of 1, d of n minus 1, we need to take the i with multiplier i. This is how many times it will be added. Minus, let's think, how many times n minus 2 is subtracted? Once. So if I do it like this, then I say that n minus 2, so second last position, it gets subtracted once. Yep. With the sum over this. I believe it should match this logic. Uh, it, this, even with small samples, I can easily just try anything else and check if my quadratic force, uh, brute force, matches this answer. And that should be it. Is this strict up to 1500 rating tasks time? Uh, not extremely strict, but let's aim with, let's aim at that. I will try to mainly do problems up to and around 1500. What problem is this? Actually, the statement is maybe even hard to understand, but boils down to computing the sum over differences of all given values. I mean, uh, differences of pairs. So 10 minus 0, plus 15 minus 10, plus 15 minus 0, 17 minus 10, and so on. Plus blue edges will give us in total here 17, so just the biggest value. So it will be biggest answer, biggest value from the input minus the sum over differences over all the pairs. First, just I, during a contest, I wouldn't bother doing this. I will first implement a brute force for that, a qu quadratic one. And then we replace with this formula how many times each one is added and subtracted. I still don't know how to prog <laughs> how to code efficiently on Windows, so I need Linux for that. This problem is, is what? Great graphs. There are test cases. I have a feeling that my com my PC is lagging just a little bit. It's not, I don't know, 60 FPS. You will not see the difference likely anyway, because the stream is in 30 FPS. I don't know, seems to be a little bit slow. There is the RAD. And computing with brute force, I claim that the answer is maximum. And now we iterate over all the pairs. And take the difference between two elements. The 
let's see if it works. As I said already, I wouldn't bother implementing this during the contest. You can simulate on paper, like I already did, uh, to check if the output matches, if the sequence is just three elements. Um, but now instead of this, we want the fast algorithm. I will rewrite the formula I had here. Uh, di times this i minus and minus one minus i. Of course, you can simplify this, but there is no point. If if you figure out some formula as, for example, a plus n plus a, in with brackets like this, I understand that you can write this as twice a plus n. But what's the point? Like you don't gain anything. The program won't be faster. This way, you still understand how you got this formula. So here you can simplify this because there will be twice i minus n plus 1, but really this version is better. If later you want to check if this formula makes sense, then you prefer to leave it like that. D, cast it too long, long, dfi times this. And I want to try this for one more test where there will be big randomish values so that for sure the form formula works. And so there is this fourth test case. How many numbers did I put here? Six. Is there anything else in the input? No. Right, graphs on in, and does it work if I run the brute force? Yeah, same output, which means that if my logic of brute force is correct, then my solution here is correct as well, unless I have an overflow mistake. the sum of differences. Well, every value is 10 to 9th power multiplied by something of magnitude n. So does it fit? Does it fit in long long? The worst we can have is a bunch of zeros and then a bunch of billions. Then we will have exactly n over 2 to second power times billion. That's 10 to 10th power, 10 to, 10 to 19th power divided by 4. 2.5 e18. Yeah, that's that's that fits in long run. But almost doesn't. Surprising. And temporarily we can get a number bigger than that, I think. Well. There are many ways to do this. For example, I counted contribution of di minus di minus 1. Oh yeah, that's a nice idea too. Uh, am I getting problems from the Discord board? No. I can do that for hard problems. Is there a list I'm following? No. But you can read this. What Gupta mentioned, I already got accepted, so we will move to the next problem in a moment. But first, what Gupta mentioned is the following. If you have a bunch of points, let's say on axis, uh, let's say there is 0, 5, 8, 9, 14, and 16. And you want to compute the sum over all the distances, like 13 minus 5, plus 9 minus 5, and so on and so on. Then what you can do is, for every piece between two consecutive 
parts like this distance free you can count how many times this distance is included in the difference whenever you get the diff whenever you grab a difference between 0 or 5 and one of those so in that many possibilities two possibilities to choose the left end point and four to choose the right end point uh, that many times we will add three to the answer this distance of three. this part is included eight times so you can say that it's this and you you need to do this for every part like there is this distance of five how many times it's included well for whenever left endpoint is here and the right endpoint is one of those so that many times we add five and so on this part of one is included three times three times so I think this is even easier to figure out than my solution. What app is this? One note. All right. Now I can get suggestions if you have some. I'm scrolling up. Somebody suggested this problem, but it's from a very long time ago. I would prefer something not ancient. Right? From how long ago is it? <laughs> Eight years ago. Oh. oh. The difficulties will for sure be messed up too. Akash suggests this one. Minimum tries minimum ties uh, some kind of football championship I can do that or pleasant Paris Paris <laughs> I cannot read this one is for sure easy and the statement is quite short so I will start from this one Count the number of pairs. Huh. All right. I s I remember a similar harder problem. I'm not sure. Uh, all right. Let's do this. I have a two thousand rated problem. Then not today. count pairs such that the product of two values is equal to the sum of indices hmm. this suggests that those two values should be small but what if all the values in the array are small We might use square root in complexity. You shouldn't have to mention that. To mention what? Oh, values are distinct. Oh, 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 oh. I see. <laughs> I see. yeah uh, well if values are distinct then that's easier because th we won't have a lot of small values and for e we shouldn't consider a pair of big values then oh, uh, what did I do D 
dun, dun, dun. We will use the fact that, like in prime sieve, when we iterate over multiples of every number, so for every x in prime sieve, we iterate over its multiples, 3x, 4x, 5x, and so on. We do that for every x. In total, it's n log n. Well known fact. So iterate over multiples of 1, of 2, and so on. So whenever we see some number like a of i equal to, say, 4, we can iterate over what can be a i times a of j. Like This will be 4, or 8, or 12, and so on. Let's consider that this is 12. And the, for the current i is, say, 7. You're looking at this element at position 7, and you consider the product maybe it's 12. Well, it's equal to i times j, so from this you will figure out j. Right? Uh, so we will have something like what can be the product starting from 4. Mac uh, the maximum product is 2n because the sum of indices cannot exceed that, the right hand side. Is at most 2n product plus equal 4. So we iterate over the multiples of 4. For each of them, we consider that maybe this is equal to the product, so also this is uh, th this must be equal to the right side. So product minus i would be j. And now we verify if indeed i plus j is equal to a of i times, uh, times this then answer plus plus that's the solution uh, here by far of course i meant a of i in general for every i we iterate over multiples of ai done Square root isn't too, isn't too slow, we tried it in Python. Possible for to solve for non-distinct numbers, which is probably more interesting. Okay. Uh, shouldn't I put i minus j? Yeah, th this is not sure, f uh, this is not complete for sure, because uh, j might be invalid here. Mm. Well, let's make it into a full solution. This is Paris. Answer is limited by n log n, so int is enough. No. Here they use indices from 1 to n, not from 0 to n minus 1. So I need to do that. And limits. So that j would be indeed element on the right lowercase n oh something is wrong i thought that there are no test cases zero one one no Do you need scan from percent x? Yeah. I don't know if I want to explain this. 
if you think why if you did this here you wouldn't really read array a you wouldn't modify this array oh uh, so product here I need to use the second AFI times AFJ is equal to I plus J plus two I iterate over product but this is now equal to the product so yeah, this should be minus two thank you Gupta now it works how to group problems to solve I, why do you want to group problems what does it mean to group problems I never grouped problems I messed up overflows right uh, for, for some reason I thought about this after reading the statement and then I stopped thinking about it. I think that without this we can have an overflow because here we get some index but we don't do anything with it. Anything else? Well, looks good to me. But it's suspicious that it's wrong answer on test 3 but I don't know what's the current mm, politics for whether we include small tests first maybe this is a huge test with a lot of test cases in such problems i usually just switch to one based indexing it would help indeed i maybe i should have done it too accept it right yeah in this problem i should have used one based indexing so just start here iterate from 1 to n I'm okay without the for loop of that previous style and now from 1 to n I'm removing all that extra plus 2 that I added which was tricky if j is up to n right and now this is easier version of the same code that's a lesson for me if there is a formula involving indices try to use indexing from the statement <coughs> since if there's why did overflow affect the answer? Um, because oh, uh, we might get some equality by coincidence, I think. Before this long, long, this gets an overflow, so it's computed incorrectly. And there might be cases where, let's say, i plus j is I don't know, 3 and ai times aj is 2 at power 32 plus 3 you know, something very big and in such a case without long long with an overflow you will incorrectly think that there is an equality overflows might cause us to sometimes incorrectly count something as the answer Wouldn't this go to negative value? Well, it would, but <laughs> that depends on the value. Not all overflows are negative. I don't want to think about values like 2 at 31, but overflows work like this. Assume that uh, the type is enough 
to handle values from minus 8 to 7. Okay. Whenever you reach 8, so you compute something like 4 times 2, it overflows and instead of 8 you have minus 8. But then, let's say 12, it will be represented as minus 4. If you say this plus 5, it will represent it as 1. Computing this with types only being able to hold values up to 7, from minus 8 to 7, so some kind of 4-bit uh, number, 4-bit type, uh, and uh, being able to hold 16 different values, this will be equal to 1. Do I auto-compile code? Uh, I hit F9, so I wouldn't call it auto-compile, but there is a button for that engine. Uh, like there is a compile button and it has a key binding. Oh yeah, I was supposed to look at the other problems suggested earlier. This one is done, I think. I don't see any more questions. Uh, so what about this guy? Minimum ties. I will first read it just to verify if it makes any sense to solve it. There is a tie or one team wins a game. All teams get the same score at the end of the championship. We want to do it without ties, if possible. All right, let's think about it. Not necessarily with implementation, but then again, implement when implementation is very short, then it's stupid. Not it's stupid to skip it. So here you go. This is the new link we are solving. Uh, can you also solve this? I will. We already here have a few links I didn't check out, so no new suggestions, please. Learning discrete mathematics, I guess some book on discrete mathematics. I don't have any particular suggestion. We want a lot of, one, like we want one big tie. I think that parity of n will be important. I think. Let's see. Mm -hmm. If you want everybody to tie at the end, then I would say perfectly everybody loses. Let's say there are three teams. If team A got three points once and zero points once, I don't need to draw it, I can just type. Team A got plus 3, 0, plus 3, 0. Team B got 0, 3, 0, 3, 3, 0, 3, 0. Something like that. It, well, I need 5 teams if I want to say that everybody played 4 matches. Oh, and the order here will be important. Let's say that A beats BC, but loses with DE. So they play in kind of a circle, where always a character beats two next characters. So like that. A beats B, A beats C, but is beaten by D and E. I 
think that's my schedule. That's in total 10 matches. 5 choose 2, yeah, it's 10, that's all. If n is odd, we will do this pattern. I will reread the statement just to make sure. Can we solve it via bit masking? I... Bit masking is there to speed up some complicated algorithms. I f maybe not, but make to maintain some kind of set. It's very strange that you thought about bit masking here in this problem where it's like a puzzle that you solve with pen and paper. Three times k score for each team would be preferred. Earlier comment. Yeah, I'm trying to here avoid ties completely. So just if a team played four matches total, I want them to win two of them. Now, what happens if the number of teams is even instead of odd? Will I need to organize one round of just ties? Hard to say. This is for when n is odd. Uh, when n is even, I guess it will be something like that, a, b, c, d, e, f, but I don't know if it's optimal. The beatings are again a beats b and c, then b beats c and d, and so on. I will not draw the full thing, uh, because just then uh, it will be harder to read. And additionally, there is a tie between a and d. There is a tie between B A, B E and tie between C F. We can of course continue the edges D beats E F, E beats A F. Like that. It's same strategy as here, just with extra ties between teams exactly like opposite of each other a and a plus and over two can we avoid ties for a single team we cannot say that they just win or lose because then they have more wins than loses it cannot happen that there are no ties because from zero and freeze, you will figure out that like, the number of losers and wins of a team cannot be equal to each other. So let's consider a scenario where every team wins once more than loses. Then the total number of matches won will not match. <laughs> there can be some ties. A proof isn't obvious to me, but this would be enough during a contest to implement. Everything beats next would solve this. Uh, don't we need to say what happens for every match? Every for every pair of teams, they will play against each other. For each test case, print 
and choose two integers uh, they describe match between one and two then one and three and so on one if x wins minus one if y wins right that's not ma maybe not the most intuitive output format sure twitch is stuck If something is wrong with Twitch stream, you can watch on YouTube. What should we implement this? Yeah, I don't see any issue. And I believe that this is optimal. But I will take a look at the editorial later to verify. Yeah, uh, all right. This is problem, which actually it's also about pairs. So let's override the file pairs. something like this for every team we iterate over the remaining teams those with bigger indices and we decide let's say that n is 10 and we are looking at team with id 2 i need to say that he wins against 3 4 5 6 there is a tie with 7 so if the difference is exactly n over 2 maybe like that this will at the same time check for parity of n. If this then say zero because I want a tie and otherwise compare. I feel safer now. Now it's like if I really compared on fractions without any rounding. In this case first team wins, otherwise the second. Looks good to me. Twitch has issues in Europe. Can we suggest up to 1800? Well, I, I will not forbid you. 1800 isn't that bad, so maybe I can do one of those. Uh, still, I already got plenty of suggestions, like the one by Warrior seconds ago. I lack a new line. This means one wins with two, one loses against three, two wins with three. I think everybody has one win and one lose. I'm too lazy to verify that. Uh, okay. Dun, dun, dun. What editor? The one on the right is Genie. 60 milliseconds solved. Okay, so it was optimal. As I said, I want to understand why this works. If any is odd, each team should win exactly half of the matches. 
Euler and Cycles. Place all teams in the circle in any order. Why do they say in any order? It, it's confusing. I'm sure that for beginners it's better to write an editorial where they just say like one wins with the next n over two teams. So everybody from two to n over two round it up. Uh, okay. If n is even, the sum of scores is this. And that's not divisible by n. Oh, I see. So they investigate what's the total sum of scores and when it's divisible by n, because only then everybody can get the same number of points. The drawing here would describe this best. People in editorial, people make too few drawings in editorials. This is the solution. Where uh, if you have six teams, then let first team A win against the next two, say BC, tie against D, and lose ev against everybody else. So always for a team, he ties the team exactly opposite to it. So different by n over 2 wins against the next n over 2 minus 1 teams and loses against the previous teams for example if in the case above if n was instead of 6 let's say 20 then i equal to 3 wins against 4 5 and so on up to 12 then ties against 13 and loses against everybody else. I solve all problems today first try. That's not true. And Timothy is right. He had an overflow. That being said, it's I don't think it's that common to make mistakes in those easy problems. You can look at standings of any code forces rounds and check how, let's say, red coders do in Division 1A. Because today we're solving problems of difficulty Division 1A, I guess. Oh, I, the Kotlin round has just ended. Right, moving on. What do we have next? Yes, warrior, I saw your comment earlier. Dun, dun, dun. This is some suggestion by Kilua. I watched Hunter x Hunter recently. I, I'm not sure if I like it. I'm not a big anime guy. guy. So, it wasn't bad. I'm referring to the name Kilua. Mm -hmm. This is the one suggested by Warrior. But isn't it too hard? Oh, it's 2100. No, no that's too hard for today. 1800 maybe, but we're aiming at around 1500. What's this? Let me read 9.0 on, on IMDb. Um, so maybe it's maybe it's good anime, but I don't know if I like this style. We want to minimize some function. Oh, 
we want to minimize the distance to k smallest k closest point this should be sliding window i f i think let's see i'm giving you the link can i solve kotlin heroes no i if they are designed to be solved in Kotlin, then what's the point of solving them in C++? Right. There is a bunch, bunch of points. Why is k at least 1? No, k is at least 0. Then why do they say k plus 1 instead of just giving k from 1 to n? Maybe because of that previous story in the statement. But you're given k and you need to find, let's say that... I will use k plus 1 instead of k. Let's say that k is equal to 3, so you need to find third closest point to a chosen one. If I decide to choose my point here, then this is first closest point, second closest point, and this is third closest point. So this distance is taken. Uh, obviously, if we do something like this, Let's say I choose this point, and now this is first closest, second closest, third closest. I want to decrease this gap to, s to third closest. I want to move my point more to the right. If I make it here, then it's only better. And I'm quite sure that we will want the distance, this one to the left, to second closest, and to the right, to third closest. I want those two distances to be equal. If I move this point in one direction, left or right, I will be further away from one of those two endpoints. So the distance will increase, and that's bad. And then I think for every three consecutive points, we should consider placing a point x exactly in the middle. They said integer point, so maybe not exactly in the middle. If we want to grab middle between 5, 7, then it's 6, sure. But between 5, 8, we cannot grab exactly the middle. So if this is like 5, then there is 8, then we, it's okay rounding it. We will choose the middle point just to be 6. And we will say that the distance is 2. What I print is x. Okay, points are already sorted. So just I should look at every k consecutive points, or k plus one because for some reason they decrease k by one. Uh, look at k plus one consecutive points. Compare first with the last of them. Grab the middle of them and say that this is a possible answer. So for k equal to three, I would consider a0 with a2, a pair of indices 0, 2, 1, 3, and so on. And that's actually, in the input, that would be represented by k equal to 2. So always I will consider a pair ai, ai plus k, using their value k from 0 to n minus 1. We need to consider all such pairs. Right. Uh, I would feel bad skipping this kind of problem just because it's just easy to implement. Can I name these pairs? Not really.
This problem takes me back. First problem I tried to explain to someone in code forces. <laughs> so you had a hard time. If you want to read my hints. No drawing, I see. So I would guess that something like this helps, but also maybe it's hard to describe a drawing. And obviously without drawing tablet it's hard to make a good drawing. We are one hour into the stream. I still haven't figured out perfect length of a stream. I don't know if they should be one hour or two hours, but I, s I feel that two hours is a bit long to still have your attention for the whole time. Yeah. On the upside, if I solve a bunch of easy problems, uh, you can comment go as you please, right? So it's not that you need to watch the whole thing to to see what is happening. Uh, right, for every k consecutive points, and we figured that we do something like this, a of i versus a of i plus k. So as long as i plus k fits, and then I will store the best pair. And I want to minimize the distance. So I just minimize the distance between those two, then automatically the half of the distance will be minimized. Here, as a question mark, I should put the position. We minimize a pair, distance, comma, middle, and by default it's infinity, infinity. No. Code Forces doesn't penalize you in terms of points, for wrong answer on the sample test. So <laughs> during a contest I wouldn't even copy-paste the sample test, I would just submit what I have. Then while waiting for the verdict I would copy-paste the sample. Don't assume that <laughs> this kind of optimization is in any way important to win. And that's. 0.1% of performance, maybe less than that. Is this stream available on YouTube? Yes. Here you go. David's light video. No, but I saved it to my watch later. In recent months, I started using YouTube's watch later a lot, and I have tens of videos there. Accepted with a big running time. Why is that? Reading is that slow? What's going on? Reading of 200,000 values shouldn't be that bad. Okay, it's more than that if we have a lot of tests and then we have bigger overhead as well. 
but really what we have then is 600,000 yeah. if there are 200,000 tests each of size 1 then we have that many tokens in the input but then they are most of them are short I wonder what's the worst test for me I think still with multiple test cases but I would expect here like 100 milliseconds top Seven, four. All right, there is a test, <laughs> very very strong test, one zero billion, just repeated two hundred thousand times. I would at least expect them to, the I mean the author, I would expect him to <laughs> generate a random value here. Well, ten thousand tests. Yeah, so 150 milliseconds seems reasonable I would expect something like that I was surprised by one third of a second oh, same here and it just repeated test well the tests were weren't very strong if they just repeat something like that hello Eric to follow this count account on code forces why Got this DP task <laughs> in brackets very good. Very good. In today's range. How to get good at game theory questions? Practice game theory questions. I actually I'm sure there are good resources for that. I I, I wonder what we will get. Code forces game theory. I'm just opening random pages to see if I recognize them, if I remember anything. I don't have a particular recommendation. I learned the little I know about game theory a long time ago. And I'm not good at it. Hmm. I thought that maybe Top Coder has some tutorials. Maybe Competitive Programmer's Handbook also describes it, but really, I don't remember. What's my height? 191. Why don't I watch football? I'm sorry. Uh, okay, let's indeed scroll up in the chat to grab some old suggestions. I've been ignored four times today. Uh, well, what do we have? C eighteen hundred. Maybe this will be good. Suggest suggestion by the British guy. But if it's bad suggestion, that I will ignore you four times more. And members, uh, each one with some speed. Discrepancy is difference between fastest and the slowest. Minimize the sum of discrepancies. Oh, we need to order them. Uh, in order to minimize 
for for every pre for every prefix then after you ordering them we care about the difference between maximum and minimum and we want to optimize for this difference what well, it's easy to say what the, is the worst thing we can do uh, because we can just grab the whole minimum and maximum and put at the very beginning if that's the worst then most likely we will start from values that are close to each other and n is small which means that likely instead of greedy we want to have some quadratic solution and I, I already see what it will be but I will try not to spoil everything All right, the link yeah now it's updated mm. let's see some examples here's a hint a tip if you are an author it's very confusing to use small values as as values in the sample if possible avoid it here there is free one too but then also they can be indices as well when you then describe anything and you say maximum of 2 minus 2 and somebody misunderstood the problem uh, they might not know what this 2 refers to maybe it's an index or something like that uh, if if you multiplied here every value by 10 and you said 30 10 20 or like let's say 10 5 7 anything like that then it's so much harder to make a mistake understanding this i really dislike small values in sample explanations and just in samples like among 10000 people who read the the problem you want to decrease the number of people who un misunderstand it from 1% to 0.1% and such details help a lot Yeah, now back to solving the problem. Maybe not back because we haven't started. All right. The co I confuse myself too because I use virtual machine with Linux here. Sports. I don't watch matches right now, football matches, but at least we have a second problem of a day about football or sports. Let's say we have 30, 10 and 20. If we do them in this order, this is very bad because for every prefix, other than this prefix of length 1, already for this prefix, the difference between maximum and minimum is very big and we don't like that. If we have a lot of values, like also 27, 24, 15, and we can reorder them, I'm guessing it would be nice to put maybe cl values close to each other at the beginning. So now we would get only plus 3 to the answer, this thing we minimize. And then maybe also another value close to them, 20 or 30. 30 seems bright here the best and but it seems that for now we are considering greedy always choose such a value that right now the maximum minus minimum will be the best so smallest right so here 30 is the best then i would add 20 15 and 10 and i believe that this is the best we can achieve in this problem i mean in this test i think that this is optimal but this will not always be the case for greedy it's an art to quickly see counter examples to various ideas and i will try to say stuff out loud here because it's one thing that you should know how to solve this problem is the other if you think about this greedy approach of always choosing the best next number you should be able to very quickly see why it's wrong there is some set of values we can choose from and when will it be bad let's say to choose 
as first two values something that is very close to each other. So chosen order. Let's say that there is 15 and 16. They are very close to each other and they are indeed in this set. In this set the order doesn't matter, but let's say they are here. But this might hurt if in a moment we need to choose something very far away from them. Maybe here 50 or 80. This seems to be like a good start of a counter test. So what about here choosing now value 80 and few other values that would allow us to reorder things in some other way such that these differences max minus min will be small for some time. Well, then I want to choose a bunch of values close to 80. 82, 84, 86. On purpose I'm not using 81 because I want to find a test where choosing two values close to each other and they here 15 and 16 are two closest. You cannot choose anything else. Uh, this is very bad. Our, my greedy solution would reorder it like this but instead it's better to do something like 80, 82, 84, 86 or the other way around from 86 down to 80 and then 16 and 50. I, we have a difference of 2, 4 and 6 so it's a bit of course worse than 1 but here almost immediately we get a difference of 65 and we maintain something around that difference so we we got 1 plus around 65 it's not exactly this but instead in this better scenario we have 2, 4, 6 and only then 65 and 65 this is obviously smaller and exact values don't matter. This is how you should think about counter tests. Uh, right. And still, if you have a bunch of values, maybe we want to mark them on some kind of axis. Maybe there is a value here, there, and so on. We already saw that it's not good to first choose values very close to each other because further operations matter. But here's a reasonable observation. If so far you chose some values, maybe for some reason this guy and this guy, it's not that you will now take something very far away. I claim that we cannot optimally now choose this x because it's only better to choose something closer. I will not try to here prove it formally but the point is as we add elements to our prefix we will not leave gaps. We will never have prefix where I would take let's say 4, 15, 20 if something between 4, 15 is still available because it's better to do this. It's a bit like, I don't know, sliding window where you leave gaps and thus you increase the difference maximum minus minimum. That's just stupid to do. <laughs> Didn't think of counter test, <laughs> just saw end up to 2000. <laughs> That's reasonable too. Mm -hmm. If it was enough to, I know, sort numbers and just start from closest parent and always choose next or previous it would be in log n total and then it's suspicious that this is not division 1a problem but they give us small constraints and uh, the intended solution is likely n squared not for sure but like uh, okay then as i said claim that always the chosen elements form an interval and we have two decisions to make whether now the next element to take will be the previous guy or the next one and again elements will form an interval so if we sort the elements from the given allowed set just elements from the input it's 15 16 80 82 84 86 number of possible mm, prefixes we have is n square like maybe we will use at some point uh, at some point everything from 16 to 84 and this number of 
possible prefixes is just number of states. This looks like DP, where the current state, after some decisions we made, right now we have in prefix we use some interval of this sequence. There are n squared states, so it's small enough number, n squared for n up to 2000 is small enough. And always we have two decisions to make. From Transitions will be from LR to LR plus 1 or L minus 1R. And there are two ways, at least two ways to implement this. Even recursively I'm sure you can do it. I will do something. Um, it will be fine. And obviously for such for prefix where those numbers are used, I care about the minimum sum so far. What's the minimum sum of differences I already accumulated? We just minimize the answer, the thing they told us to minimize. When will you do a code versus more than 2000 stream? Maybe this Thursday. So, in two days. Around 2000. Let's do it like that. Or maybe I will do add color. Add color beginning contest streams? I don't know. Wine bottle DP. Oh yeah, this this problem is like wine bottle problem. If you watch my lectures on dynamic programming, the third one is about line of wine bottles. Add it to the schedule, please. So you want to keep me accountable. Okay, cut versus medium heart. In schedule, I renamed first day, the, the, this first day, to medium heart code versus. Balloon burst, I don't remember that one. How to write lead code? I don't know. 1600 on average? Uh, yeah. uh, so watch this if you haven't, if you want to learn DP iteratively. This series. Cutter Grand Contest card. What, what was it? What? The wine problem or the stream? Sometimes not to type the whole thing for vector, I use two-dimensional array like this one, but this is a bad practice, so let's try not to do it. We minimize and we will use long looks because the sums over those differences can get can get big. Now I don't really like using long long max or even int max because then when you add something to it it overflows. I prefer to use my own infinity like this. It's enough. Billion, yeah, billion times n would be enough, so even 10 to 13th power. But I don't like long long max, which is around 10 to 19th, I think. Because even add 1 to it, you have an overflow. In Python it's better, because infinity added to anything is still infinity. In 128, just just in order to use long long max, I, I prefer long long and use my own infinity. All right. Read the array and sort it. I don't care that it was called S in the statement. I can use my own name.
no, zero. If you want to just use one element, then maximum minus minimum is zero. And now we need to just in good order of for loops. This is not trivial. I I will say dp of lr is minimum. It from what two states we get here. From this, if we expand to the left, that plus a r minus a l. That's the difference. Assuming it's sorted, but yes, it is sorted. Uh, what's interesting is that actually I don't need infinity here because I all, I don't compare with my own value. I just say this is overwritten as that value, which makes things easier. So everything is initialized as zero by default. And now if you do it this way, I guess something will be wrong with that. Obviously, what we print at the end is the best sum so far for the whole interval, interval from 0 to n minus 1. Uh, now, is this correct? No, it isn't. Because when, I, when I'm at l equal to 0, for example, I want to compute dp for this interval from 0 to 5. I didn't so far compute stuff for l equal to 1. But I say that this is minimum of dp of from 1 to 5 and something, right? And this is not yet computed. With recursive dp, you don't need to worry about it, about the order of computing states. With iterative dp, you do need to care. And in this case, this helps. Now, when I look at any interval, I'm sure that stuff starting one unit later already was considered because bigger L was considered first. Here L needs to go decreasingly, R increasing. Hey Abdullah. Three, zero. We have some bigger tests. The bigger test works. Now here during a contest, I would run for all the samples. Warrior, stop! Stop! I can scroll up. I don't want all of you to repeat your links many times. Accepted. Any questions about this? Solving hard problems will increase your idea pack and skills. Well, solving hard problems helps. I. I don't get better by solving these easy, pro easy problems, at least not significantly better. Of course, it's still some small improvement, I hope. <laughs> I, I hope I'm not getting stupid here, but I will get faster at solving easy problems. I think that in general my solving speed only can decrease from such streams because then I will I learned here to explain stuff as I go. During a contest, it's better, obviously, to just focus on the problem. Uh, how increasing left by one or decreasing right by one works? Uh, sure, I can talk about it. So this part. Right. Um, it's better, it's easier to under understand with that problem I showed you all on YouTube that you should watch. So on my channel, Erikta, there is this video, DP lecture free, dynamic programming lecture free, line of wines or something like that. And you will learn this over there. And generally, 
if you want to know if you have some sequence and you want to know what's the best score so far for this interval and you know that uh, just before this interval either you had this or that one of those two was the previous state because we said why intuitively without some proof when you have any here interval of used values you will only choose the next one or the previous one you will not leave gaps like in sliding window like in that problem about electrification from half an hour ago mm. so just before this state from l to r we had one of those two states l to r minus one or l plus one to r and if for them already thanks to dp we know what's the best already accumulated sum of differences max minus mean so let's say for this one we figured score so far is 150 and for this one it's 170 then we know that well it's better if you want to really do this to, uh, to be at this state the best we can have is to use this 150 up to this point then also add this guy which just means that if this is a sequence of sorted values like uh, maybe this is um, I will shorten it a little bit right better say so this is three five six seven eight it's part of sorted sequence from the input if you know that numbers three through seven you can you can handle you can order in some prefix and the sum of differences so far is 150 of course it would be smaller it just represents something like that dp already figured out that it's optimal to reorder them maybe like this and now you add eight to that you know that here you had score of 150 now along with eight you need to add eight minus three to the score so hence 150 plus 8 minus 3 that's 5 it, this is the new score for the interval of all values from 3 to 8 and this 150 in general it's minimum out of score 1 score 2 where score 1 is what we can get from with values 3 5 6 7 score 2 is what we can get with values 5 6 7 8 Uh, you mentioned some lives uh, some time ago small groups of students uh, yeah i didn't go forward with that so far in particular i didn't uh, so i postponed gathering people in groups if you sent me an email then for sure then well either you got a response or i still owe you a response you can send me a, a you know reminding email i will eventually get back to you All right, should we wrap this up? Maybe like one more problem. Let's vote this time. Let's vote on the last problem to solve. Okay, I, I grabbed three from the chat. Sorry, I cannot check out everything. Uh, no, our difficulties are right. 1700, 1800, 1700, they are all right. And what are they about? Loves divisors. Mm. Be something least common multiple okay something with divisors and LCM so math e problem Senior and weights uh, you put weights on scales uh, 
and they should go up and down so I guess constructive problem maybe and uh, there is a grid like this and our directions we get instructions and we need to get to some place but maybe we don't know the map I'm not sure okay those are the possibilities what was the name strop Muffy LCM or scales weights weights on scales constructive constructive and finally grid you can vote now not constructive okay thanks so ignore ignore constructive question mark Excellent weights is good, you're saying? If you're the one suggest, suggesting it, Talon, then <laughs> you, don't get, you don't get to shout in the chat that this is the one I should do. Voting like this is much better than just asking the chat because some people write the same thing a few times like I already tried this many times where I would say just type one or two in the chat and I would eyeball it like which option is chosen more but too many people just type it a few times please do cut cycles it's 1200 rated but if it's 1200 rated then I would say it's below the stream today we did things around 1500 how many prefix of a string are palindrome I guess there are structures for that but so you for sure need to look at algorithms like KMP or hashes or Manaker. Something for sure will do that for you. Well, wait, what? Cut cycles is 1200 rated and it's impossible. Now you get me interested. How to solve graph problems? Should I solve more or should solve hard problems? My advice about choosing problems is here. You should choose you should solve problems that are hard for you but doable. This? Since you out yeah, <laughs> sometimes I forget. Uh, link for math I will I will give you a link once I this once I see the results Mafia LCM right Mafia LCM it is I can then say that Mafia LCM I will solve and submit the other two I can just take a look maybe So yeah, that's Java very good way to say it. Solve problem as long as later you will be able to comprehend the editorial. Like if if you keep solving problems and you keep m not understanding, not be able to understand the editorial because the solution is that complicated, it means you're solving 
problems that are too hard for you. Is this that impossible 1200 problem? Anyway, uh, Nico does maths. This is the link. Why did the command not work? Non negative integer case are that. I'll see if those as small as possible. Can we always make it one? Oh, LCM, not GCD. <laughs> okay. okay, never mind. I thought that we need to minimize GCD. And then I started thinking. For GCD, I think it's easy, right? We can always make one. I, I understand that this is a different problem, but if they said that those two numbers need to be co prime, then what? There is a difference between them, A minus B, or B minus A. The difference is constant, let's say four. Then you need to increase them so that let's say a plus k wouldn't be divisible by two so just we it's enough to make a plus k co prime with the difference that we know the problem becomes given a difference like four and starting value a let's say 20 find the first number above 20 co prime with this difference four and i think we should that problem would be solved greedily where you try every next number. Uh, you will make, I think, logarithmically many steps at most. Step Daska's problem. Did Step Daska make, make a whole round? That's not Steph. What's, what's his problem? This? Yes, sir. This? Okay, but instead we have LCM. Lowest common multiple of that. Perfectly. This math by. Didn't I check a second ago? Oh, the, the problem of the contest. Alright, I see. Uh, I need to grab water. Um, one idea is, of course, to just keep increasing and try the next million values, but I don't think it will work. And I see a counterexample where, like, when does it happen that we need to increase both by a lot? Oh, actually, it's here. Th this is something like that would be my counterexample. Just use bigger values. If I choose, say, 2 million one and 3 million one. I wanted to say that we keep increasing them to make one of them twice the other. So it's not exactly that. Uh, something like this. LCM of those two is quite big. Two, one, two, one. Oh yeah, uh, like that. Two, one. But if you increase them a little bit, that is by hundred million, 
you will get this and now LCM is I think as small as possible because it's just equal to the second number I made second number divisible by the first one and I needed to increase by 100 million if you don't make the second to be device uh, multiple of the first one then LCM will for sure be multiple of that so it cannot be as small it will be at least 4 million yep so there are cases where you need to increase by a lot the difference is constant and then lowest column multiple will be in some way related to that difference a little bit like 100 million 100 million for the number of operations is a lot. Obviously, here a lot just means that it's linear, uh, it's linear from AB. LCM is the product divided by GCD. So it's almost like we maximize GCD. I see. GCD is in per particular divisor of the difference. I think we will investigate all divisors of GCD. We want to minimize LCM, so kind of we want to GCD, we want GCD to be big, if possible, of course. Uh, but also GCD of a plus k b plus k. If two numbers are divisible by seven, then also their difference is divisible by seven. So GCD is a divisor of the difference, which we know, b minus a. For I grab the difference, I need to think what happens if a is equal to b. If a is equal to b, then I don't increase them at, at all. So first a equal b, then just print a. And that's LCM, we don't increase. Otherwise, we grab the difference, we iterate over divisors, and we say that, well, that's possible GCD. So we have GCD. And now I need to make both of them divisible by that. And that I think is easy. It's like asking by how much I need to increase A to make it, say, divisible by 10. And if I make just this divisible by 10, automatically I make that divisible by 10. But because I know that, well, 10 is divisor of uh, the difference. So the solution is, for every divisor of b minus a, say, k is how much we increase k to make it by divisor d for every divisor let's call it d of the difference okay is this for example if a is 47 and divisor d is 10 then we know that we need to increase by 3 uh, we just use modulo for that the remainder will tell us how much we lack to be a multiple of that and that's a possible k and we also know the values so we can figure out what will be the LCM and I think LCM will fit in long long LGM stack on division 2 not anymore 
Uh, division 2C is Division 1A usually, and it's not that always somebody red needs to be able to solve it in half a minute. It's not that bad. Sometimes actually it's bad to be high rated because people expect you to solve all the problems immediately, or at least all easy problems immediately. We don't know if B is bigger than A, hence absolute value. Now for all the divisors of that, I will, to improve the readability of this code a little bit, I will make a function for it. I almost messed up finding divisors of a number. It turns it up to square root. If divisible, then this is a divisor and the opposite also a divisor. Cool. Now we need to check by how much we increase A. For that, I grab the remainder. Let's remember for 47 and D equal to 10, I would get remainder 7. And it should mean that I need to increase by 3. 10 minus 7. Unless we had a perfect division, then it means we don't increase at all. If uh, so I guess this works. Now by this much we increase, and now just a plus k comma b plus k. That's a candidate. We minimize. Yeah, we minimize. In this case, I already told you once today why I don't use long long max. I don't do it in DP where we add something to a value, to DP value, where then it's overflow. Here we just minimize with it. Start from two, why? One is also a divisor. GCD can be equal to one. We need to print K. Oh, I see. I see. Now LCM is this times that divided by GCD. Or is there some function in C++ for LCM? If so, I should learn it. do answer dot second and that's not long there is there is LCM Whoa. but now a question is whether I have C++ 17 on my PC how do I check that in command line like GCC mm. 
No, this is not how you check it, do you? How do I check what version of C++ I have? Nine zero. Do we see here version of C plus plus? So what, I need to know that 9.3.0 includes C++17? Oh, <laughs> just I should use G++. Okay, that's the easiest way to know if, <laughs> if I have it. All right. Thank you, chat. And I do have C++17 installed. Right, then let's use this. What does it return though? I would guess that it returns int if I provide ints. First, does it work in any way? Yes, it does work now. LCM. List common multiple is not representable as a value of type common type of those. Yeah. So I need to, I think, at least do this. If at least one of them is long long, then their common type will be long long. Right? Is there maybe something like that? LCML? LL? No. Sometimes there are those functions where you just add L at the end. Uh, fine, so we have that. Video on Turner Research. It doesn't really come up often. Wrong answer. Hmm. I don't know why. Let's cheat and open the test. For the sake of saving time, you forgot to change A to zero. LCM is A. K, we print K. Okay. Because when I was here, I still thought that we print the LCM. I was here when somebody told me that actually we print K. Okay, chat, you're right. Thank you. Yeah, I didn't cheat. I didn't <laughs> open the tests. It's only that somebody told me exactly what uh, was the mistake and what I should use instead. LCM long long. Oh, so I can do that. 
do I will I need to provide two types with a comma? And this should give us wrong answer because of an overflow. So I'm submitting this only to make sure that I understand what's going on. Yeah, this is an overflow. I told you earlier, but you didn't see the message. Yeah, sorry, Horcrux. Indeed, sometimes I miss stuff. That's enough for me about uh, in terms of solving problems. I mean, in terms of coding things. I can quickly take a look at this thing you told me about. Mm. Integer weights from 1 to 10 kilos. We put something left, right, left, right. What is M? Oh, uh, there are many of them, and the, I thought that she has just 10, and they are from 1 to 10. Um, after putting 5, we cannot put 4 or 6. see this means that we have as many as we want um, weights 8 and 10 all right well then it's DP always the current situation can be described by how many moves we already made what's the previous move and what's the difference between weights on the two parts and this number of possibilities is m, m, m times 10 squared, so it's small enough. The current state can be described by just three values. How many moves? What's the last move? And what's the difference? Maybe it's not trivial that the difference is small, but if always if in a moment you need to put at most 10 kilos on the other side and it will outweigh to that other side then it means uh, the difference was smaller than 10. minimum distance between nodes in a graph sounds still like dp but in a graph of those states if so it just dp solved recursively should I do code versus or lead code for interviews? Definitely lead code. Don't worry about code versus if you care about interviews. Like only interviews. Lead code is about interviews. I want to know what what's here the graph solution. I will not code it. There is balance, so that's difference. Vertices are tuples of three numbers uh, through the states. All right, that that's DP. I, I understand how this is described in terms of graphs, uh, but when you do any DP and you remember your previous step, 
in order to later reconstruct it you, know, you move through a graph uh, what did we do in terms of dp today uh, we had this problem where we move between states you can say that there is a state 1 1 and from that there is an edge to 1 2 also there is an edge to uh, I, to nothing else but from 3 3 there is an edge to 3 4 and 2 3 and no so on you have this huge graph and you're looking for some best weighted path dp is always a graph problem just every node every state is some node and every dp problem is about finding minimum path or counting paths from one node to another uh, so really they it's fine that describe this as a graph i would still i i don't think i would think in my mind i wouldn't even say a word graph when solving this problem i would say it's dp sure so you can say the same thing about every dp problem shouldn't it always be a dag D this is a dag no because always the last state increases the number of moves we made m so it is a dag and in every dp problem it's a dag as well and there are small exceptions like if it's not a dag we 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 just don't want negative cycles Hi, Sup Maktavish. That's some complicated nickname. Uh, so that was Xenia and Waits. It did maybe it was beneficial for us to talk about DP versus graph. Mm. Treasure Island. I don't know the statement, but I will tell you this. Maybe, maybe it's about this problem, maybe not. Uh, because I thought about something educational that might be related. When you get information that, let's say, you move three steps up, so from some start, you know that you moved up by one, up, up, then let's say right. And this is the target. But you don't know where you started, you just know what are the instructions. So three times up, once to the right. Then, and you have some kind of grid where, where you know which cells are blocked. Then every blocked cell will imply some cells where you couldn't start. Uh, in a grid. If this is a blocked cell, this one uh, let's mark it as b then for sure this you couldn't start one two three here there there you can start in one of those cells for every for each of those blue axes if you start there you will go through the blocked cell uh, what's funny is that you get here some kind of reverse shape where if this is how we want we know that we move from the start to the target and we know that this is through empty cells uh, then every block cell implies some cells from where you didn't start this kind of thinking helps a lot and often when we get such a set of instructions then we look at the grid for every blocked cell we just mark some cells as not possible you cannot start there and then whatever is remaining unmarked that's a possible start when will i be able to sub i don't know if it will be ever possible i don't have plans to go to which partner but i think i satisfied the requirements now maybe there is some requirement like stream five times in the last week but then i would just grind it uh, yeah, but no, I'm. You won't be able to sub anytime soon. Recursive formula in probability. You're talking about Markov chain. 
but I don't think that's related. Mark of train this thing. I don't know what why you're asking though. Kathleen F. No, no, I'm finishing the stream. It's more than two hours, so I already should have finished like twenty minutes ago. All right. Thank you all for watching. Uh, see you in two days. As I already promised, so now I cannot change it, I guess. Uh, in On Thursday, same time, or so 6 p.m. Polish time, I will solve some harder problems. Today we did easier, around 1500 difficulty, so division 1A or so. And uh, on Thursday we will get back to harder ones. I'll go stream covering all topics serial-wise. No, that would be huge. That's a lot of work. More streams like this one, 15 to 1800. Well, I'm sure there are people who would like every kind of stream. And for every difficulty bracket gap, there, there are people who want that. Application dev? No. Okay, one last thing today. Somebody told me that this 1200 problem is difficult. Cat A goes from N to 1, then N, like that. Cat B like this. What is happening here? Cats apostrophe D? Oh, would like. The, this is short of would like. If both if cats cats d like to go in spot. Is this how you can write in English? I didn't know that. We can make a show I'll go with Eric though. You can call it however you want. I think that a title Code Forces Problems is more meaningful. Had befouled his order, so it won't return. Okay, where cat B will be at our K. N and K are huge, and there are test cases, so we need to do it in constant time. Well, it sounds harder than twelve hundred difficulty. I was talking about the earlier suggestion, but what suggestion about the difficulty range? Oh, can we have Algo stream covering all topics? I, I see, I see. So you're not topic talking about this stream. You're saying that in general, uh, I can cover various algorithms and call it Algo with a degree to I see. Yeah, like, this is a huge topic and to do it on a stream, it wouldn't be high quality. Yes, I'm doing the impossible one. I, I don't like you know, going through tens of topics in a few weeks and doing them in an average quality. In particular, there are so many YouTubers nowadays doing code forces and algorithms, and it's optimal for everybody if instead of every youtuber producing content daily in you know half as quality instead everybody spent a month for some topic and really described it in a perfect way of course i understand that i'm stronger than many others like my rating is very high and i already have some uh, experience in teaching so it's not that if I produce something daily, it's really shit, but still it's not optimal for the whole community, I'm sure. Google, would you expect? <laughs> I'm sure that I'm able to get to Google. Uh, <laughs> some recruiters ask me from time to time if I want an interview. I don't want to work for Google now, right now. 
massive block. Yeah, yeah. I will make it. I will finish it. Uh, regarding my job, you can read this. Now, regarding this problem, I don't know, let's let's try to solve it. Where is my problem here? This is the last problem. I already wanted to finish. Just once a week, graphs and trees. It's not about frequency. It's about the amount of time I need to spend on it to make it good. I I make my streams and in particular I do graph problems. Sometimes they are more about one topic, but rarely. Oh, but second thread did trees and for graphs graphs are just very wide topic you cannot just talk about graphs I don't know if this is optimal what I'm doing. Uh, 4, 2, 3, 3. Now, because they meet yellow, so the weaker one will skip by 1. Then they continue. 2, 5. Then 1, 1. And yellow skips once again. Blue. Here, yellow. Right. I need to in general understand what happens after they meet. If they don't meet ever, then the problem is trivial, of course, because we just care about the number of turns, modulo and whenever they meet, then blue uh, the weaker one goes once more. And here for odd n odd n then they meet again after an over two steps and again yellow gets plus one so i i claim that for odd n mm. i would first say where they meet so for odd n i would do the following logic if k is smaller than n over two or i don't know about details off by one I will not care about if this then just print K something like that else decrease this by an over two now you know that they meet oh I know uh, I don't even need that logic let's say that assume that they meet at step zero I mean, Step zero, position n. I can assume that a second ago, just before the process started, the situation was like this. And then yellow uh, was weaker, so he moved to one. And then at, so at step zero, and then after every n over two steps, they meet again. So I claim that the answer is well k because that's how many steps we, uh, the second cut makes plus k divided by n over 2 because once every n over 2 turns he uh, he needs to move once more because they get the same position this model n and maybe you need some off by one i think that this is the answer for odd n for even n they never meet, right? It's exactly this. I don't like how they use and modulo 2 instead of making an if because that just 
harder to read and you should never do that in editorial it's like the goal was to minimize the number of characters used no be a human and just say if n is odd then do this otherwise do that because they never meet all right so i solved the impossible problem i think it was harder than 1200 uh, i wouldn't expect people to like beginners to solve this easily right. Th this is not microsoft whiteboard this is one note you can read a lot about my software here Where to practice ad hoc puzzle type tasks? Oof. I would say that a math book is good for that. When I was in high school, I'm sure that I went through some kind of book with puzzles or math problems. And here you can open problem set and choose category. Maybe it will be something. In code forces the closest category for that to that is ad hoc. Ad hoc ad hoc Maybe I'm mistaken. All problems from CSES. I think it would be cool, it would get a lot of views and it would be very little value in terms of educational thing so no i don't think i will do all problems from cscs any kind of speedrun or marathon is sounds cool but then it's much worse than just focusing on single problems and uh, describing them i'm mean, talking about them but sure maybe if i will be bored one day i will do it right now i'm really done we are over the time, so thank you all for watching, have a nice evening, bye.